everyone, it's me, I guess. Um, I'm kind of back. <laughs> I thought a lot about YouTube and about vlogging and I really missed it. Um, I was watching a lot of Christine from Calico this week and I was feeling really inspired to vlog in her kind of style where uh, you just show what you're doing that day and then update again at the end of the day or even the next day or even if you miss a few days which is totally the kind of vlog style that I need and also I don't have to show my face as much which I think was really what was stopping me a lot from <clears throat> sorry vlogging and YouTubing more frequently before is I get a lot of anxiety about showing my face and all of the other stuff that goes with that so this will be a lot easier um, this actually reminds me a lot of how I used to work on Twitch, where I didn't always have a face camera and I just had my hands working, which was perfect. Um, I'm hoping to get back to that too soon eventually. Um, I did get a new laptop finally, so that's really good. I hope I won't have to do as much editing with this and that that'll also help a lot um, with uploads and stuff. <clears throat> Sorry. I've also been trying to do a lot of TikToks and real Instagram reels instead, but I don't know if that's really taking off anywhere. But anywho, um, I guess I'll start with what I'm working on today. So I do have... So I'm off from work right now, which I'm hoping will get me started in being able to vlog more frequently and get me in a good routine because then when work starts, it'll be a, get a little bit more uh, spotty and then I'll have to figure out what I'm doing. But this will be good to build sort of a habit, I guess. Starting off with some coffee today. So it's about, I don't know, almost 10 a.m. It's July 13th. I came back from vacation and my boyfriend had a lot of fun in New Hampshire. Sorry, I had to pa pause and really clear my throat there. It was getting really bad. Um, and this is really what I worked on mainly when I was there. I lost my cross-stitch bug for about a year and a half. I was really into knitting, particularly socks. And now I'm really into... Still kind of crochet now-ish more. Cross-stitch is coming back, but in a weird way. Like, I want to work mainly on one project at a time, which is very unusual for me. But I am going to try to start kidding up another project later today. I'm going to start a birth sampler for my brother's wife, who's having another little one. And I've also been super fixated and focused on reading. Sorry, I don't know what is going on with this cough I have today. <laughs> um... So my plan for today is just to stitch a little bit more in here. I have to add, this is a home sweet home. It's a free pattern by Lord Libidin. You can find it just Googling. I'm really hoping to print out some more finished pictures of my projects so that I can use it that way instead of editing it in. Um, I think I did have one of this one. I just forgot to grab it, so I'll show you guys later. But I just, I'm torturing myself and I am filling in the white stitching in between here. I just like the way it looks and in the house. And then I'm adding a male trainer here. And then I charted out my own female trainer because this is from Pokemon Red and Blue and there isn't a female trainer in that game. So that's just my plan today. Maybe I'll start one of the trainers, uh, finish up more of the white here, maybe get the home stitched in. And But before I start my stitching, I am starting off my morning reading. So right now, today I'm going to be reading Ramona the Pest. I really love Beverly Cleary. She passed recently. I read her memoir. It was... Really, well, I read one of her memoirs. It was really, really good. And I've always loved the Ramona books. Um, strong, strong-willed girls. And we need more books like that. So, easy read today. Ramona the Pest. I'll probably finish it while I'm drinking my morning coffee. Then after my coffee, maybe I'll start some stitching. I also have to do some plant care. So I do plan to show plants in my videos also when possible. So if I do some watering, maybe I'll show a few plants that are really growing well or... That I'm really into but that's about it hope everyone else has a happy Wednesday I don't know when I'll update tonight I hope I get to I do want to work on my temperature blanket as well I'm really behind in it I was trying to do this whole TikTok thing with it but it didn't work out which kind of set me really behind on it but if I get to work on that too I'll show progress on where I am with that um, I do have my running group tonight so if I do update it'll be late tonight but I'll see you guys later Hey y'all, happy Friday. Today is <laughs> Friday, July 15th, I think. <laughs> it's those days in summer where I start losing track of what day of the week it is and, and the date. Um, just updating a little bit before the weekend. Uh, this is where I got on my Home Sweet Home project this week, which I'm really happy about. 
I'm still filling in the white because I like to torture myself. I just feel like it looked better, but now I don't know. It kind of would have been fine. I finally got the boy trainer done. And oh, I think this is a cat here. Probably, I hope so. Yeah. And I started to free stitch the girl trainer because I didn't quite find a sprite that I liked on Spriter's Resource or anything like that. And there is no girl sprite for Pokemon Red and Blue. So that's my little design. End up looking like a little Pika girl, which I like. I might, I don't know, this was supposed to be like little pigtails or a bow. I might end up making it look more Pika, Pika girlish. I don't know. Anywho, the body is going to be exactly the same because I couldn't be bothered to try to figure out like a different outfit or something. So I'm hoping, hoping I'll be close to finishing this this weekend. I am getting a little burnt out and I hate when that happens when I'm so close to finishing a project and then I just get really, really bored of it and I want to do something else. So that might happen and then I'll pick it back up. But I'm hoping to at least finish off the girl trainer, maybe fill in some more of the white there. Um, and I might start, I might not start, well, sorry, I might uh, do one of my other projects. Maybe work on my temperature blanket, which I wanted to work on this week, but I didn't quite get a chance to. And then um, I did pick out some fabric for a new start. So I am going to the New Jersey Floss Tube Retreat next week, um, held by Arlene uh, Cohen, I think. I forget her floss tube name. I think it's the same. But anywho, I'm going to have a new start there. I did uh, kit up a board sampler that I'm going to be making for my brother's wife. And I'm using... I love the Stitch Bow book. This was how I got back into cross-stitching, actually. And then I started using the bobbin system again. But I also really love this system. So I did start... I did decide to kit it up in here. So if something was on a bobbin... I just put it on one of these bows instead, and I just saved the bobbins. Oh, not in there. Somewhere. Maybe up here. And yeah, it comes with some pretty useful pockets. I put the bobbins up there. Missing a few colors. Well, I'm not missing the colors. I just don't have a dedicated skein for them yet. And uh, I didn't print out a picture of the pattern yet to show you guys, but this is the fabric that I chose. So I did use my color wheel to help me with colors. It's not really showing true. It's more orangey. But I did decide to go with a 32 count uh, picture of this plus Belfast in I think that's color Chalice uh, that I got in Dixie Darling when I went to Tennessee a few years ago actually. So I have a lot of fabric that I really just need to use. And I will be stitching over two so that'll make it a 16 count. Really excited for that. Probably will use two strands for the bird sampler. Um, yeah, I mean, other than that, that's my weekend plans is hopefully work on my temperature blanket. I'll try to give you guys an update on that. Uh, this will be for my new start um, starting Thursday in New Jersey. I should be going there with um, Deb from Stitch to Stash and Caitlin, Big Apple Stitching. Um, I hope I got their YouTube usernames right. I really have not been watching FlossTube other than watching Christine over at Calico Whimsy. Um, trying not to say um so much, but now it's happening a lot. But I think that's about it for this short little update. I am going to try to keep my vlogs to maybe 30 minutes. So whichever last video that ends up being, we'll close out the vlog. But I think that's about it. I did kind of just chill today and this week. I went to the pool today, which was very relaxing. And that's about all I really did this week. So hopefully I'll have a finish. Oh, I did get a hoop yesterday at the craft shop to try to finish up my Luna and Artemis finish from a few months ago. If you are following me on Instagram at Jenna X Stitches, I did finish a project recently. Well, quite a few projects actually. One I couldn't post because it's a gift for somebody and I really want it to be a surprise. And once it gets gifted, you'll see what it is. So I do have two finishes. And I really do want to try to get some more things into frames. So I did get a hoop to try to get a hoop finish done. That's about it. All right, so I will try to update you guys. If not this weekend, definitely beginning of next week. Hope everyone's having a good Friday and a good start to the weekend. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Hey, everyone. Oh, there it goes. Hey, everyone. I thought I'd do a little quick plant update or a little plant part of my vlog. Um, 
It's currently Sunday, July 17th. Um, it's about 3 p.m., 3.30. I'm speaking really softly because my boyfriend has taken a nap. But um, here's my heartleaf philodendron. Now, if you watched my previous videos, this was one of my plants that wasn't growing at all. <laughs> I only had like two leaves for like almost a year and then all of a sudden this happened. <laughs> so now it is massive. Please don't mind my messy kitchen table. It's a huge mess right now, but you know, this is my newest leaf on this vine. And I have a new leaf coming in right over here. It's gonna look great. And I'm just, right now I'm experimenting with this trellis that I just made by myself out of chopsticks. So originally I just had these two pieces here and then I just added, it's so tilted, I can't decide if that's the trellis or the plant. <laughs> um, and I just added this third one right here to kind of help it stand a little better. But I had, that's it right now. I added two more propagations down here. So hopefully those will start vining out. I, I'm thinking I'm going to cut it soon for sure. I'm definitely going to repot it maybe, maybe give it a cut. I don't want it to trail and it's currently in my bathroom and there's not so much space where it is right now. And I did pot up some little babies. So I'll pause and I'll show you what those are looking like. All right, so now we're at my kitchen counter and here are some pothos that I potted up just to have in my trade group. I don't think I'm going to keep them myself. Um, these cuttings came from my plant that I have at work. I pulled those at work, which was growing like crazy with the perfect unobstructed windows it has. So it had these big, beautiful leaves. And this was my other pothos that really isn't doing too great. So I added a few of the cuttings into this pot too and refreshed the soil, see if it'll do a little bit better. And, oh, and this one's just a single cutting, which I love doing these and just having one kind of vine out. But these three I'll probably be giving away. Um, and this is a philodendron mycin cutting. So it's just one. That's This was the one I cut off of my plant. And then this is the one of the new leaves. And in there somewhere now buried is another baby leaf coming through. And I just repurposed these yogurt cups to give away in my plant group when I'm doing trades or just giving away cuttings. Um, makes it a lot easier not having to buy pots or and I also don't like giving away just cuttings because I feel like it, they die a lot on people. So I, I think about new plant people from my own experience and I know I was very nervous when I got just a bare rooted cutting um, in terms of what to do about the soil and stuff. So I let these grow a little bit and then I offer them up for trade or for free. And then if we scooch over into my sink, we have my orchid that's almost at the end of her bloom season here. This is my second attempt at an orchid. I did rescue one, so I'm not counting that one as my other attempt. Um, it had no roots basically and I tried my best, but I learned a lot from it. But this is my current one that I just watered. I only use distilled water on this plant because I have such hard water in my apartment. So once those blooms are done, I'm actually going to repot her so that she can get new roots and work on growing her leaves, just waiting for the blooms to be done. This one also lives in my bathroom next to my um, heartleaf philodendron. And then down here we have a little spider plant. There are two cuttings in there. These were pups that I took from my boyfriend's grandma over in Texas when I went to visit and <laughs> made it through TSA, made it the whole flight. I had a spider plant a while ago that died and they're supposed to be really hardy so I'm trying again with this friend and it's growing really nicely so far. This one lives in my living room. Right now it's living on top of the air conditioner. It's doing really great so far. Also gets distilled water so I don't have any of those, not so much anyway, of those crispy tips on the leaves. It really enjoys distilled, does not like hard water. And then this friend here, I got at New Hampshire last year when we went on vacation, and this is my Raven's Easy. It hasn't put out any new growth for me yet this year. I'm wondering if it actually needs a new pot, even though 
I did pot it in the pot that it came sitting in. So it wasn't a nursery pot sitting in this white pot. And I decided to just pot it up into there. But I really think it needs a bigger pot. Plus some of the, um, the rhizomes, the little potato looking guys there, are exposed. And I haven't succeeded in covering them with soil without it still spilling out of the pot. So I definitely think it needs a new pot and to go in a lot deeper. But it's a very big, beautiful plant. Um, all the new growth that was green has finally turned black, which took a while. I was wondering if it was even going to do that, but it did. It's very beautiful. I might snip off a leaf or two, try to propagate to put in my trading group. Because, you know, summer and fall and spring are the best times to try to propagate your plants. These take a super long time. I did um, save a ZZ last year that I made a video about. Um, over the summer and the stem cutting I gave one of the stem cuttings I gave to my mom and it only just now sprouted new growth so it took about a year so it does take a while and I and I hear that leaf cuttings take even longer so yeah I guess that's it just wanted to throw a little plant update in there for you guys too maybe I'll get some stitching done tonight I've been working on actually making crocheting some squares for warm up America um, out of extra yarn that I've had left over from blankets and stuff. So I'll show you some of those squares and maybe I'll actually get to work on my temperature blanket today too so I can update you guys on what's what that's been looking like because I don't think I've shown you it at all. I really just love the blooms on this um, orchid. They're really pretty. All right, well, um, there goes a little plant update. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Hi all, happy Monday. It is July 25th, uh, 2022. It is about noon time right now and I just wanted to film another little vlog update. I did go to the New Jersey floss tube retreat this weekend and I totally meant to vlog more from my hotel and stuff like that but you know I was really there to just stitch 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 and by the time I got back to my room I was exhausted. Um, I had a wonderful time at the retreat. I got to hang out with my friends, Deb Stitch the Stash and Caitlin, uh, Kate Stitches. And I also met some new friends. I met, um, I think it's Stitching with Faye. I met Sarah. And then I also met Jasmine of Jazzy Stitches who sat at our table and it was a fun, fun, fun time. It was amazing. I did get a lot of progress done and I'm gonna share that with you guys now. So here is my, oh wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, I'll come right back. Whew, okay, I'm finally back. That took a while. Um, so this is my Dark World uh, map from Legend of Zelda, Link to the Past. That is by back, Box Cat Stitch on Etsy, but you can also find it free in a lot of places. Um, this is on 18 count, two over one, I think cross and I hadn't worked on this project in over a year so I am so happy with the progress that I got um, let me see if I scooch on over here there we go I'm literally still in the clouds which is so hard to work on hopefully I'm almost close to the edge I got about another page and a half to go and then I will be able to move down there which I am so excited about in a way because It'll mean another page of clouds, but at least not on the top. And I'll get to do some more grass. And then, you know, start more of the buildings and the little towns. It's been a lot of fun, but I just want to stop stitching. These clouds already are such a pain. But that was mainly what I worked on. So that was one. Sorry. I'm still learning how to, like, hold this for vlog style. And then I also got a ton of work done on my Nesteros piece. So this is Game of Mushroom Kingdoms. It is the Super Mario World map, but Game of Thrones style, which is a very, very, very large project. And I started this a very long time ago. I am stitching it on 28 count blue Lugana. Sorry that I don't know like all the exact colors and stuff anymore. I just, it's been so long and I haven't written them down recently. But I will in future videos or if you comment 
I'm happy to let you know. So this was another big milestone for me at the retreat. I finally got to the end. I did decide to stitch all this water, but when it's all done, I really, really love it. And I am so excited to be able to go over to this side now and stitch just a little bit more water again, <laughs> but um, you know, get more into you know the wall and starting the actual map that's gonna be super fun and this is all tent stitching so it does go by super fast it is just kind of monotonous to stitch all of that water and my cat is getting her hair everywhere it's just never ending so that is my game of mushroom kingdoms nestor rose that I got to work on and then ta -da, here it comes I had two finishes so I got to ring the bell at the retreat and I finished my home sweet home finally I ran out of the B5200 right before the retreat and I was like you know what maybe it's meant to be a retreat finish so we went over to Needleworkers Delight I got my B5200 and then I stitched on this and finished it up I freehanded the girl trainer uh, I think she looks okay I think she looks like a girl so I'm really excited to get a frame for this and put it up in my home for me and my boyfriend. Home sweet home, we both love Pokemon. This is a free pattern by Lord Libidin uh, that you can just Google and find. And I think this is like a picture of this plus in Bramble. It was just like a little scrap that I had, I think, or, you know, just a small cut that I got at Dixie Darling uh, many, many years ago. So that was one of my finishes and then get ready. Unless you follow me on Instagram and stuff, then you already know. But, you know. Then I finished Harvey from Stardew Valley. Wahoo! So I did stitch him in one of those, like, pre-stretched kind of 14 count Ida thingies you can get at Michael's. They're perfect for these character picture portraits, which I love. I did not do the 701 for the brighter green. Nobody at my table had it at the retreat. And I was way too shy to stand up and ask if anyone else had it, but I finished it. And I'm so excited. I forget what color I subbed it for. But this was a fun stitch. I'm kind of debating that if I do more of these Stardew portraits, I might do three strands. Just because I'm not super crazy about the coverage uh, that I got on this one. So we'll see. I'm not sure who I want to do next. If you have any recommendations or thoughts on who you would like to see, comment down below and I'll take them into consideration. This pattern was from the Stardew Valley Cross Stitch book by Siri uh, that you can get on Fangamer. So it's really fantastic. I really, really enjoy how this came out. I can't wait to put them up and do some more. That's Harvey. And then I did, so at the retreat, they were having some, I guess I can leave this here for right now so you're not staring at a blank thing. They were having some, like a challenge, like a start six and six. So for each hour you would start a new project or work on a whip. And I was going to participate in the six new starts, but instead I just only did three. And my first new start was, uh, well, I don't know if it was my first one. It was one of them, but I did happiness is stitching with friends. This is the designer. I don't want to butcher their name and the fabric that I'm using is this 32 count Tiffany Linen by Eclipses. I don't know. I've never heard of it before, but it is so nice and sparkly. And this is where I got in that hour. So I started the friends, decided to use some of my fancy floss finally, and some of my color and cotton thread club that I was subscribed to for so long and never used any of it. Thank goodness for my friend Deb Stitch the Stash who was there and help me pick out some colors because I was very on the fence with a lot of them. It's hard for me. I'm not very good at, I don't have the eye for that kind of stuff. So it's great to stitch with friends right there that can get you rolling really fast. And then for my second new start, I am doing a birth sampler for my brother and his wife. This is by Stitch Rovia on Etsy. I, oh, no, no, no. I take that back. I think it might not be. I have to look it up. I don't remember. Um, the name and stuff I'll have to add and the date and everything she's due in December. But I did start um, like the little grass area. And I think this is on a 32 count Belfast by Picture This Plus. I don't remember the actual color name right now. Might have been Sunset or Sunrise. 
just trying to see if I'm holding it the right orientation. I think it's this way. Yeah. Yeah, the orange isn't really coming out too well. But that's where I got for that second hour. So, you know, started some of that little grass in the middle. I really don't enjoy stitching over two threads. It just uses a lot more of my brain work and it hurts my brain and I don't like it and I whine the whole time, but I will enjoy it when it's done. So that was my second start. And then my third start of that night, because I did it over two days, was, where are you? Oh, here we go. It was a little Joan Elliott. So this was just a piece of 14 count Ida that we got for free in our swag bag at the retreat. And I'm making this as a little ornament. I'm using some fancy floss for it too, which I love. Oh wait, I can't show you the actual pattern. It is a Three Kings pattern. I'm trying to see if they have it like finished. Because I forget that these little chart books don't always show you what it looks like done. So it doesn't. But it's from this. Christmas chart book by Joan Elliott that I got from a Cross Stitch Crazy magazine. I really miss that magazine so much. So that's what I got in that hour. And that was the last hour. So actually I cut that hour short because I was really tired. I went to bed a little bit earlier. So if I would have stayed up for the full hour, I would have had more done. But love it. That's going to be another quick stitch, which I'm really looking forward to. And then I did have two other things that I wanted to start while I was there and I didn't. I did really, really want to start this Dimensions kit. Oh, just look at those cardinals. And I feel like I was getting really inspired by Christine at a Calico Whimsy. Hi, Christine, if you're watching. I just have had this chart since maybe... Oh, gosh, I can't remember when we went to Dixie Darling. But they had this one as a model finish as well, and it's beautiful. I think maybe 2017 sounds about right. So it's an, it's been sitting in my stash for a while. And I really did want to start it, but maybe I'll start it. It's staying in my bag, so I'm not going to put it back in the closet or the cabinet. So I'm going to keep it in my bag so that when I see it, I'll start it. I mean, you know, Dimensions kits are what they are, but they're so cute and I love them. And this one doesn't seem like it's too big. I mean, it's on 14 count, which I don't mind. And it says the finished design, sorry for the glare, is a 10 by 14. So, I mean, compared to the full coverage I work on, it's not so bad. There's just so much back stitching, you know. But there's a lot of half stitches in there. So, you know, but I, you know, I'm going to rush to get over to this little guy. No matter where I start. And then I'll fall off, you know. But they're so, they're so cute. And then I also wanted to start this Little House Needleworks, uh, home, of a needle, home of a Needle Worker. And the fabric that I had picked was this color in cotton. Um, let's see, River Rock. It's a 16 count item, which I really enjoy. Look, it's a house. I'm going to stitch something with the house on it. <laughs> Sorry, if you've been on my Instagram, <sighs> I just wish more people would let people stitch what they love to stitch without making faces or snide comments. Look, my cat chewed up this chart. Oh my gosh. But um, yeah, you know, not everyone stitches houses and alphabets and or samplers. P like just if you don't have anything nice to say, there goes that saying again, don't say anything at all. Some people really missed kindergarten and it's really sad. But yep, so hopefully that one I'm going to keep around in the bag. I mean, I haven't picked any threads for it. And so this one needs a little bit more work for me, other than, unlike the dimensions kit. And then, I mean, I don't normally do haul, but I want to keep this in my new start pile. I won in the raffle! I won a fully, fully kitted Long Dog Samplers Tyler's Lion. I put so many dang tickets into that bag, but look at it. I am so, so excited. It's a full kit. It came with the fabric, the floss. Oh, 
It's enormous, but we're gonna get it done. Um, the fabric that it came with is this 32 count charcoal grail. I haven't yet checked if it's gonna be one over one or two over two or whatever. I mean, I have, and they gave me four or five skeins of Ecru, DMC Ecru. This fabric's gonna be really difficult for me, but I am gonna try. If it's over two, I'm really doomed. I mean, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I'll figure it out. I don't know, but it is beautiful. I have a feeling it's either gonna be one over one, but I haven't checked the measurements and the dimensions just, just yet. Um, so that's in my plans there too. Other than that, I mean, I've just been stitching. I have been, I did put myself in a challenge to do, I've always done a lot of these uh, squares with leftover yarn uh, from projects and stuff like that to make blankets for Warm Up America. So if you don't know, Warm Up America is a great organization of knitters and fiber people and crocheters that make blankets, hats, scarves, oh my gosh, shawls, a whole bunch of stuff for people in need, homeless people, uh, babies in the NICU, women's shelters. I mean, you think of it, they are, are doing it through gathering these donations. So you don't have to make an entire blanket. What you do is you stitch a seven by nine square, not, well, it's not a square, but a seven by nine piece. It can be in any pattern. Um, for the most part, any yarn, but you know, they really want durable yarn. So using up that, those odds and ends of acrylic is really perfect. And then you just weave in your ends, you mail them whenever you can. And once they get 500 squares, they mail it to somebody who's offering to stitch them all together and they donate the finished blanket. So I'm challenging myself to do, I'm not gonna send them all at the same time, but I'm challenging myself to do 500 squares for Warm Up America. I'm at five, <laughs> have a long way to go, but I'll see how many I fit in my first box and I'm planning on my Ravelry and on my Instagram to take pictures of what, of the number of squares and um, what they look like in each box until I get to 500 boxes. So here's just some leftover yarn that I had from a baby blanket that I made a few months ago for a in-law that was ex uh, having a baby. So that's it. So guys, I think that's really it. I'm gonna spend today putting in some more stitches on my dark world map. So that those are my plans for today. Maybe I'll do another square or two of for warm up America. I also really need to update you guys and work on my temperature blanket. I am terribly behind, but I think I'm going to wrap up this vlog here. I think it'll be long enough now. So hopefully I'll get it, you know, lightly edited and put up soon. I also will put in uh, just a few clips that I took from the New Jersey Floss Soup Retreat of the room in general and then of the brag table, which was really, really awesome and inspiring. I feel like I got really rejuvenated at that retreat for cross stitch. I haven't been cross stitching for about a year and a half now, and I really feel like that rekindled my cross stitching interest. So knitting will take a break and cross stitching will move on in. Still reading tons of books, still reading Narnia right now. And I think I started this true crime book just to get a spot on my bingo, my reading bingo card called Tears of Tears of the Silenced. I think, I don't know. I'll post more about it on my Instagram, but other than that, I hope everyone's doing well. I'll see you guys in the next vlog. Bye.